did you know that telescope is 2.7 meters away from me? I do, because I spent three minutes messing around with the tape measure in setting up this shot. But how do we figure out how far away stars are? In the absence of a slightly longer tape measure, we're going to need a more technical approach. And for that, we're going to need to watch this space. Three, two, one. Stars. When we're measuring distances on Earth, we can generally directly measure them, be this with tape measures, meter rulers, or other means. But when we're looking at the stars, neither this method nor the units of meters are really appropriate. Let's look first at the units and what other options we have available to us. The first of these is the astronomical unit, or AU for short. This is the average distance from the Earth to the Sun, which is equivalent to 1.5 times 10 to the 11 metres, or 150 billion metres for those that don't like standard form. Now, obviously, visualising what 150 billion of anything is, is going to be difficult for the vast majority of people. So having an alternative unit for distances within the solar system is definitely preferable. For example, if I told you that Jupiter orbits the Sun at an average distance of 5.2 astronomical units, then this makes much more sense than saying it has an orbital radius of 7.78 times 10 to the 11 meters. The astronomical unit works really well within our solar system, where the furthest planet away from the Sun, Neptune, orbits at 30 AU. Even if we can't comprehend just how empty the space is between the objects in the solar system, we can at least understand planets being up to 30 times further away from the Sun than we are. The nearest star system to us is Alpha Centauri, with Proxima Centauri the closest of its three stars at around 270,000 astronomical units away. At this point, we've passed the limits of usefulness for the astronomical units. This is for two reasons. One, from a logic point of view, if we're looking at other star systems, then comparing them to distances defined by how far we orbit within a different star system doesn't really make sense. Two, by the time you get to 270,000 of something, we've reached that range where the numbers don't really relate to what we can understand. So instead, let's just say the distance in units that make more sense, 4.25 light years. The light year is a great unit for explaining distances to non-specialists. Plain and simply, it is the distance that light travels in one year in a vacuum. It can also be useful in helping others to understand that when we view the light from a star, we are not seeing the light it is currently emitting. For example, the Sun is 8.3 light minutes away from the Earth. So, if the Sun stopped emitting light now, then we would still be receiving the light that the Sun has previously emitted for a full 8 minutes and 20 seconds until things go dark. It also means that if a star remains static relative to us, then if it is 400 light years away, then the light we see today is the light it emitted 400 years ago. Can we get the lights back on now, please? That's better. Now, the problem is when astrophysicists measure the distance to stars, they don't do it in light years. That's what we convert it into to make the distances more relatable for the general public. To understand the units we do use, we need to explain the method for calculating the distances to relatively nearby stars, parallax. The best way to understand this is to experience it for yourself. So while you're remembering to like this video, also give me a real life thumbs up. Get your thumb at arm's length from your face and use it to block out an object in the middle distance. Now close one eye, and without moving your thumb, close the other. If that worked properly, it should have looked like your thumb moved when you know it didn't. This is because the angle that you're viewing your thumb from changed, 
making it seem to move relative to more distant objects, which appear static by comparison. This same process can be scaled up to work out the distance to stars, not by closing an eye and winking at celestial bodies, but by comparing the position of a star from Earth as for where it appears in the sky now compared to distant stars, to six months time. In that time, the Earth has completed half an orbit, moving from one side of the Sun to the other, and this changes our perspective, making the star seem to have moved against the more distant background stars. We cannot measure the physical distances involved, but we can work out the angle of the sky that the star moves across. From a side view, we can understand this more clearly. We can form a right angle triangle, consisting of the distance from the Sun to the Earth's position now, the distance from the Sun to the star, and the distance from the Earth to the star. We take half the overall angle that the star moves through for here, and with some calculations, we can work out the distance to the star. These angles tend to be incredibly small, to the point that working in degrees isn't the best idea. As such, we can split one degree into 60 arc minutes, and each one arc minute can be split into 60 arc seconds. It is this which helps us to define our most useful unit of distance, the parsec. This is the distance the star is away when it has a parallax of one arc second. From an astronomer's point of view, this is really helpful as the unit's definition comes from the method that we use for figuring out distances to stars itself. So whilst light years might be easier to understand for the public, parsecs are what are more commonly used in a professional setting. As with the thumbs up example from earlier, the closer the star is, the larger the angle of parallax. We can see this from here on where the star has moved relative to the background stars on the back shelves. There are some serious limitations to this day. More distant stars will have increasingly smaller parallax angles. If these become too small for us to reliably measure, then we can no longer use this method to work out the distance to stars. This will require other methods, but these can wait for another time. Next week though, we're doing something slightly different. I'm going to try and make the constellation Orion in the lab, putting the stars at the right relative positions to a camera to demonstrate just how important perspective is when viewing a constellation. Until next time, please do have a look at one of the other videos from Haberdash's Adams Astronomy, including this one. Also, like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and until next time, please continue to watch this space. Thank you.